life you're about to live in you just see and in, in 2000 they come up back on my way where my mom and my younger brother stay where I make box productions for a me to live in the yeah. island living tell man after chat freestyle yes, one more time with the chorus with some man you ready? Yeah, run it run it we love the island, island living, living we love the island living and all of the yellow are people they are giving me love the island, island living we love the island living and all the yellow have eyes that the people but giving but me but love but the but island living me love the island living tell man me have a chance it again What's up, everybody? This is Curtis Pooley here, bringing you your Real Talk Maui podcast. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm here with my cousin, Bri. What's up, everybody? And we got a special guest on the episode tonight. One of the guys that I've been doing music with for a long time, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's been, yeah. you know, killing it on the roots music scene on Maui for a long time. But uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce... Tailman, the yeah, universal so man. Give thanks, brothers, for having me. Yeah, Super bro. pumped to be here, but a bright yeah. so man. Oh, man it, bro. So cool, bro. you guys are doing this. It's so epic, talking yeah, to bro, people, yeah. freaking expressing, telling stories. Happy to be here, bro. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank so. you for freaking coming on, man. Cause yeah, bro. Happy to have you on. As you can see, we had a lot of musicians, and we had to bring on all the musicians. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah why so not cool. Have on the universal messenger. Yeah, <laughs> yes, so. yes, 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 so. But yeah, before we even get started. Man, like where where did that name come from tailman like first tailman, of all. that's already a long story right there yeah. bring it down, up man. here we go yeah, we got yeah, time yeah. <laughs> the one song you've heard the song universal messenger that one kind of tells the story mm-hmm. the song i wrote universal messenger but tailman pretty much when i was 19 on Kauai, i was i came from maui and moved Kauai right after high school with my best friend surf better waves you know what yeah, i mean yeah, Kauai yeah. is epic waves bro i'm always good but not as good <laughs> so we were just pumped i moved to Kauai right out of high school and freaking um had this band the shakers playing at the poipu beach cafe pretty much after people started seeing me singing they just started kind of calling me tailman so that's where you re- but that's only one that's, that's one you... small part of how tailman came yeah, okay. yeah but that's where you originate first start music was on Kauai. well yeah like i'd still play around on uh maui when i was in high yeah. school just like with my one friend get all irie sing along with the boom box try yeah. recording one at a boom box on a cassette yeah yeah like crazy kai from boom box to boom box yeah. that was super <laughs> yeah. classic mm-hmm. and then when i was in Kauai, that's where i actually started singing with like uh, the shakers yeah. reggae band. Are you in, but, are you in link the, up with but them? But the tailman name still just to finish that up. So partially it was just the tailman part, but then there's a whole other story that I tell about in the song. And then yeah. it starts back to like when I was five years old. Okay. Like I I started making up these stories about some warrior warrior named Oman, mm. Oman. <laughs> like an ancient Oman. warrior named Oman that fought for peace and justice and righteousness yeah, and unity yeah. like this spiritual warrior and I was only fi- like five and a half almost six years old oh yeah, bro, you was thinking back. of that kind of stuff <laughs> <at> that. <laughs> yeah yeah I told wow. cause I would tell this story and like play like I was Oman and one time in a jacuzzi like I was in a jacuzzi like with all these like four or five of my like grown ups with my mm. mom's friends right and it was super classic. I told these dudes, because like, I was always a talker. Like, I can talk when he talk, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm part Polish. I don't know what they can talk to, but, <laughs> but, brah. And I actually told these grown ups a whole story about some warrior named Oman. And they were like listening to this little kid, like, tell a story. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I forgot about that. I mean, you guys started off with this, so we're going into it. <laughs> and then, um, I forgot about it. But then when I was eight years old, like, I was my mom's first child. So we had a little bit of karmic stuff you know a little yeah. harder we loved each other liked each other but we had some little more attention mm-hmm. I, I was her first kid maybe i didn't feel like she could love me here and there whatever just like oh yeah. okay you're still getting but deep she right still tried her best and she yeah. was amazing <laughs> and she did love me but anyway she brought me to a psychic lady yeah at eight years old to mm-hmm. have like a spiritual meditation full-on psychic experience and this lady was super cool her name was kitty but she uh, was this like, is on Kauai, you didn't no, know. no, this is back what? in Santa Cruz, California. Oh, Santa Cruz. Okay. Before okay. I became Hawaii, so okay. I, was like, oh. I came to Hawaii when I was like nine years old, almost ten. Oh. But you still so been here longer than a lot of people probably watching this, right? Now. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't like say it because then everybody gonna know how I really am. Yeah. But, yeah. Ah. <laughs> You've been around for a while, but. <laughs> but anyway, so right there, the story of Tailman. So when I went to this lady, people gonna trip. They don't even believe, but I told this whole story to the whole world in my song. Universal Messenger. So it's all good. Check it out. But anyway, at eight years old, I went to this psychic lady, and she was like a trip. Like she was like full spiritual, but then still into Jesus, and she had like her own way. But she would take people into deep meditations, like full on. So she, 
I went to her and I had my own private session. My mother was like, left me there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much left me there. And then uh, the lady, we had like two meditations. She brought me into a first meditation. Yeah. And she just like brings you deep and gets all your energy flowing. And I'm so I could feel like she got and she guides you and like this is like you. the warm up meditation. Yeah, yeah. And then she guided me into the meditation. And then I felt all this energy rushing through my body. I was like, oh, this is a trip. Yeah, this is me. Because I kind of, even as a little kid, was intrigued by spiritual kind stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like how yeah. we could tap into spiritual kind, like powers even as a kid, almost like fantasy oh, okay. kind. Then she brought me out of that meditation. And then we went into one more meditation. This one, like, she brings you deep and she, like, guides you closer and closer to the light. Mm -hmm. And pretty much brings you, like, as deep within myself as I've ever been, except for when I was, like, just channeling lyrics on the mic in front of a crowd and everything was coming together and the whole crowd and, and the vibe was just as high as it gets and everything was connecting. That was That's like one of the only times I could feel that feeling like this time right. when the lady brought me into the meditation. And that, is that still at eight years old? Or like eight years old. Oh, you, so, <laughs> bro, you're doing a lot. You're still getting <laughs> deep. Bro, like, bro, <laughs> bro, this is a true story. story. Bro, true story, bro when I was eight, I was like, bro, I, like, I want to be the Red Ranger. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like typical bro, eight years. No shit. <laughs> but keep going. Yeah, yeah. so eight That's years old. We're, we're keep going. Yeah, so we're going into the deep meditation right there. This time, what she wanted to do was like, I wanted to ask my soul questions. So she... That's what I said, like, oh, yeah. I want to ask my soul questions. I don't know where I was coming up with this stuff. Like, exactly. Hey, kid, yeah? mm -hmm. So she's like, okay, so she brings me deep as you can get. And I'm just like in this deep meditation. And she started testing energy jolts for yes and no. So like one jolt we figured out would be like a yes answer. Two jolts. And it was called coming kind of to my pelvis, which was kind of funny. Like, chuk, chuk, chuk. <laughs> like straight up. Like, not yeah, yeah. Straight up. This like, is, energy this is jolts new, to my this, is, this is new to us. So right, yeah. we're, we're so you, you interested. You could have listened to the song. No, I, I do, but this. I never thought that you was actually getting jolted <laughs> by my like, son. No, I was. No. It's like energy <laughs> rushes. You never say nothing about no, I never tell you he's got spirit. I never tell you about the pelvis. Energy glass. But, but it, it, it is yeah. Yeah. spirit. Keep going. No, you? Keep going. no it's deep, bro. Right. 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 deep into it. Let's too. go. So it. freaking right <laughs> yeah, there. We're it. almost done. We're almost done. And no, then, no, so, no, I know, but I'm saying we almost did it. Yes. So right there I started asking my soul all these questions. And then at one point I was like getting the answers. And then I said, I said, um, what's your name? I asked my soul what its name was. And it said Oman. Yeah. So then, right there, I kind of tried to meditate as a little kid for maybe six months. Couldn't get anywhere near where the lady brought me. Forgot about all that and was just yeah. being a kid, grew up. Okay. So then all those years later, when I was singing, 19 years old, and then the people called me Tailman, and then I was like, Tail Oman. Bruh. What the f And I didn't, it just came to me in a moment. I'm like, bruh, that's when I felt my soul the most, when I was on that stage with the Shakers freestyling in my 20s. I mean, I feel it ever since, but that's yeah. when it started, just all my soul pouring out freestyles on the mic. And Teo and my, so my physical and spiritual deep self came as the one. Mm. Teo, because it's, like it's Teo and it's Oman, you put it together, Teo Oman. Yeah, right. It's like, Oh, wow. So that's where Tailman came, tail came from. That's where came from, yeah. That's and the then you just said, run, right bro, that run with that name. Jerk, bro. That Tailman journey, bro. That was mm. the universal message. Bro, no, I like the way, like, I like the, the picture you in pink, bro. Like, you know what I mean? You made me, like, yeah. fuck, because that's deep point. Yeah. <laughs> bro, 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 little you know, kid with this fuck, lady. Yeah. Freaking bro, crazy. You, doing, huh? The yeah. universal messenger is definitely a perfect name for you, man. And then that's another story, too. Yeah. The funny one about that one is, like, Years later, my my dad, he's like a blues singer and he has this huge name. I don't know him as good. He lives in Europe, but he's like Dr. Harmonica, the one man, big time, super blues. Oh, so it's in your blood then, man. No, but he has this crazy log name. Yeah. 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 But he had this crazy ass log name. So right there, I was thinking, bro, I'm going to make... And then there's like... Jordan Ruben Blackamore, you know the guy Jordan. He's yeah, got like yeah. tree names. Yeah, Jordan yeah. Ruben Blackamore. It's like whole oh, tree names this guy get. So I was like, bro, I gotta come up with another moniker, Tailman. And then I was like talking to my best buddy Jake, who I lived with at the time. He's always supporting my music, yeah. brother Jake. And so he kind of knows how I think too a little bit. So I was like, Universal Messenger. And I'm like, nah, that's not quite it. And then he actually stole my glory, bro. Because I was about to figure this out. Universal yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Messenger. So all of a sudden, Jake's all, bro, you can't say Messenger. You got to say Messenger. And he's all, you can't say Universal. You got to say Universal. So he actually, Sword. he came up with it right before. Bro, me, that's bro. nuts. Brother Jake did. So he's the one that Shout actually, out to him, yeah. Shout out to him. Brother Jake, him, brother Jake Darnell. Yes, sir, yeah. Yeah, so that was classic. The Universal so, Messenger. So yeah, and then the reason you say Universal Messenger is because 
and then the song I wrote the meaning any yeah. person that speaks a message for all people expressed from the inner depths of our soul channeled from a higher poa poa yeah. Yeah. yeah that song is so anybody is one universal message when you're yeah. teaching if you get kids and yeah. you're giving them a, d a nice message and they're receiving it you're a universal messenger right yeah. Yeah. right right yeah everybody wow, that is mean man see just one question and that this one <laughs> that was a big question that was a but big that, that was mean bro. man tail mom I was so locked the thing in I got back tail mom in the house for a minute I was like oh shit bro. I was like, locked in bro, that story yeah. that was bro, a mean like, story though hey, that was, was mean yeah I was on day bro I was on day shots to you that was mean man that was different so that's some tail mom shizzle but yeah this is now you know what tail mom tail mom is messenger the universal but yeah stoked to be here with the brothers yeah for yeah, sure bro how's yeah, the boxing much. training lately been a fan you, forever yeah. yeah tell us about it what pretty been much been to? a fan for like 45 years but more like i make boxing this like some people follow all these football teams and i like follow boxers mm -hmm. yeah so like i would make up lists of like 60 boxers try to follow their career lately you know i never update the list Every, <laughs> it's been like i Maybe like a year and a half, I never update the list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but so I still wait, watch wait. a lot of the fighters. So okay. then I just love watching boxing. I've been a fan 40 years. But yeah, recently. Yeah. But yeah, wait, on that list, who's number one on that list then for you? Um, so right now, my number one fighter. Wait, is actually, like top a, three then. Top three, because number one is hard. Top some three. guys already had passed, but like my t my favorite fighter of all time pretty much was like Miguel Cotto was one of my all-time favorites. Oh, okay. But like right now, it's Terrence Crawford. Okay. And then uh, I like two, Anoya. So one more. Okay. Anoya. The Japanese fighter, he's super nuts, four-time world champ. And right, he, I like how you don't choose like the obvious ones, right? Yeah. And That's wait, how you know you're locked. Mine down. is Pacquiao. Pacquiao is my favorite. Well, yeah, he was one of my all-time yeah, favorites. He's my all -time team. My, mine is of oh, Mayweather is up there for me too, just yeah. because he's you know undefeated and it's just, he's that guy. But yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get some good ones too, though. I mean, mm -hmm. David Benavides is like my most favorite fighter that everybody might not know, but he's mm -hmm. already a two-time mm -hmm. world champ. He's in the light heavyweight. He's the one guy that they always talk about Canelo won't fight. Because mm. I love Canelo too, but I'm bummed because David Benavides, is the, he's the youngest super middleweight champ in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. He won it at 20 years old. And that's the division that Canelo's been ruling, but never fought this guy, David Benavides. He was, he was, so he's the youngest guy mm -hmm. that ever won the super middleweight world title. Mm -hmm. Then he kind of went out, partied with his friends. Not going to say he dabbled a little mm -hmm. and they stripped his title. <laughs> Sure. But then he came back and fought a good fighter and had a, and then he won his title back. So he's the youngest two-time super middleweight champ in the history of the world. <laughs> Canelo. So then, so you should, so then you should be the hype man. Bro, so then Canelo came to his division, where this guy's still undefeated to this day, David Benavides, and freaking um, he still he was like not fighting him, fighting all the other champs. No, so he got stripped again. That's what happened. The minute David he came right in COVID, he was in a hotel for two weeks fighting mm -hmm. in the bubble, so he came in overweight. And they stripped him of his title. So he's still undefeated. Two-time world champ. His title's been stripped twice. So that was Canelo's opportunity. That's when Canelo came into the super middleweight division. Mm -hmm. And then he fought all these other champs yeah. and ruled the division. And then and then what happened was David Benavides won an interim title and was the number one contender for, tr for three years. And he never get to fight Canelo. So he went to the light heavyweight division and now he's... Had one victory and he's fighting another top fighter and then he's trying to fight Bivol or Better Beer. So okay. David Benavides is one of my favorite Benavides, fighters. Benavides, right? If you guys don't know Shout boxing, out. check David him out. David Benavides, the, he's yeah. good, bro. The guy you don't know about that is a beast, man. He's a beast, bro. He's <laughs> like six feet. Yeah. Nah, he's yeah. not. Yeah. He's like 29 and 0 with 24 knockouts. Something ah, like that. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the uh, Mike Tyson fight. What is, what's your opinion? What, what you kind of think about Mike Tyson versus I Jake mean, Paul? How like, was I was dreaming he could do a miracle, you know what I mean? We all yeah. wanted a miracle. Yeah. We but, all um, wanted, yeah. We always I just think it. it looked like maybe he had a slower back, maybe, like one stiff knee. Yeah, he yeah. He couldn't step his around knee, Yeah, move, his knee never you know looked I mean? like, every time he would punch, he'd always, like, kind of mm -hmm. lose his yeah, balance yeah, he or something. He, he was walking kind of with a narrower stance. Somehow yeah. in the training, he was doing the old Tyson's, yeah. like, he was doing shift steps and lateral shifts, and he was... Yeah, but, in fight, like, but I give him props just, for going out there though. Yeah, yeah. Too, his team, guy, and, I, yeah. and I feel like his his legacy never get fucked mm -hmm. with because he's still Mike Tyson. Like you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. He like, no matter rounds. what anybody, I don't think they are saying yeah. that. But if they are, yeah. like, you're an idiot. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. you yeah. said, bro, it looks bro. like looks like he was training like super hard, bro. Like, yeah. So like maybe the training kind of took a toll on him that by the time the fight came, that's kind of what I was. Yeah. And then didn't like Jake Paul at the end like bow or something like kind of like. 
give him his props. Yeah, he, he kind of did. Or something. Yeah, he, he kind of did. Kinda. Yeah. I never, I never see the ending, but mm-hmm. I know, like, there's a saying like you're like you yeah. bow to him or something, yeah. you know. But that's cool though. Yeah, he was because he understood, like, bro, like, hey, you know, we're yeah. up on the money and fucking. <laughs> yeah, but you know, guys, thanks for even fucking yeah. doing this, bro. Now a lot I mean, of guys that pay him respect after age, the fight. It's pretty man. nuts, even two minute rounds to yeah. just yeah. go through yeah. the whole fight. And he took some cracks. He was handling. He kept mm-hmm. his, but he just couldn't get. I yeah. thought he could bully him up a little more yeah, to yeah. the ropes. You know what I mean? Yeah, prime Mike Tyson would obviously lick him though. Oh my god, he would have been dead. But so, yeah. shout out to Mike Tyson for coming out. At, like, how old is he? Ooh, he was six, like, almost sixty nine. So sixty. Yeah, I think he's like sixty eight, but almost right, sixty nine. That's, crazy, that's 58, cut, that's sorry. Sad 58. That's sad on Jake Paul. Fifty eight. Yeah, that's sad on Jake Paul for not like winning it more. I think Jake kind more, of like, maybe could have landed a few more saws if he yeah, wanted, but but I think he just was like, fuck. I don't know. Uh, that was just a yeah, he, he disappointment. Probably, he though. almost probably thought maybe Tyson was going to bring a little more heat. Yeah. Know, I mean, that was a big disappointment, oh, I would say. Yeah, yeah. for me, yeah, um, that, was, that was a bummer. The ending, it, watching it, the first round, the first and the second round, I was like, oh, fuck it, it's a pretty good fight. And mm-hmm. then it seems like the third round, he just lost his he way. He got all gassed, right? Kind now. of, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. And He still had a few nice punches here and there, yeah. a couple jabs was yeah. catching, but. But, yeah. <sighs> but Jake Paul, yeah. hey, I mean, I'm still think like, obviously, I cannot step in the ring with Jake Potter, you know, fucking boxing that much, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, what do you call I still think he can't go up against like a pro. Yeah, let's like see him fight, fight someone that's not retired. He's or like fought this. one, he's fought two pro rounder. boxers so far. Yeah, one was the Tommy Tommy Fury, and that guy should be better. Like he's not as good as you would think. Mm-hmm. He's like fourteen and zero, and he won the fight. But Jake did hold his own. It was yeah, like yeah, a close yeah. fight. Mm-hmm. But I guess Tommy Fury's not. Like, I don't know, he just yeah. thought he would be better. He had a good yeah, yeah. 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 But he was pretty huge, though. Mm-hmm. He pretty He's huge. a pretty solid dude. Yeah. yeah. And then he fought this other boxer that just looked like a little over the hill, but had a decent record. But that's yeah. the only two actual boxers. Oh, wait. Great. And I don't know, I like, too, is like, hey, um, is it Ru- Ruiz? Ruiz, the one that won um, Johnson? Oh, the, the super tall Ruiz, guy? Ruiz, not you, Ruiz, I don't yeah, know. like that, man. He's the kind of chubby Mexican dude. He won the. Yeah, he beat Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua. Yeah, yeah Ruiz is good. Yeah. Andy Ruiz. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't fought enough lately. I know, but mm-hmm. bro, it's, bro. it's off of that fight, bro, because everybody was like, "Ah, this fucker gonna lose," and then boom. Yeah. Pop, 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 I knew he had a chance because I watch choke fighters. Like he's yeah. he's pretty he's short, but he's mm-hmm. a quality boxer. Like yeah, he knows yeah. how to bang. Yeah. He knows how to fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so moving on, man. Also, John Jones got that victory, so at least Ooh. that capitalized. That was the next day, so yeah, that's pretty nice. Right, John Jones, I, I'm gonna say it right now, is the goat, man. Yeah, he he's is. probably the best fighter of all time from in the UFC. I'd yeah. say the best UFC. Yeah. Too bad he didn't fight more. Yeah. 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 Definitely, but I, I feel like he just took out everyone since we was right, since like t- what 2008. Yeah. Till now, just taking out champions, right? Like guys that you would was just holding the belt, and he would just. Yeah, even but, though he had like things that off the f- off the map issues and stuff like that, man. Everybody what's goes through that ring, kind of stuff, but man, freaking in the ring, yeah. man, this guy's the most dangerous guy in the world, man. My, for my, sure. my favorite two, uh, two of my favorite UFC fighters is always BJ Penn mm-hmm. and yeah, the kind of um, Clay Clay Guido, Clay Guido, Clay Guido mm-hmm. is a Guido, classic, yeah, man, with the long with the hair, hair, yeah. Because every fight, man, you you know, getting win or lose, he wore yeah. his yeah, yeah, hair, bro. He would oh. come on and bang. He would take He's some crap. Yeah, too, bro, bro, that He's bad. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, that's John. my two right there for yeah. UFC. Bro. No, it's yeah. not. Yeah. I like Max Holloway a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 of course. Because right well, sure he, he's a mean yeah. boxer. Yeah, he's a mean boxer. He's boxer. also a mean boxer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But, yeah. yeah. the blast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the boxing's keeping me in shape now. Yeah. Though I'm not boxing people like I like boxing mitts, punching bags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of footwork just for staying shape mostly. Right. Does it help your stage presence too? Like you know, just training, doing something. Helps your lungs for singing, like guarantee. You're not gonna get out of breath as much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For yeah. me, I feel like sure. if I move around too much, I'm gonna start sweating. And <laughs> oh, die. I sweat. Uh, when I sing, I sweat. Ask this yeah. guy; he knows. Right? Yeah. Me too, right? Depending on depending on where we're playing at, man. But usually I do, yeah. Sweat. Yeah. Yeah. By the end of the set, I know. But this guy, sweat, saw, I saw a couple of times he walked up with like a windbreaker, like you know what just I mean? his past one. But I was sweating. <laughs> I was like, bro, like, you're gonna sweat. Brands, I, was like, I sweat. Yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. funny because I sweat more than the average dude. Like if I'm working, when I'm boxing training, like yeah, yeah. Like a couple of my friends was tripping when they was holding mitts for me. They said like sweat was flying in their mouth. They're like, right, when you went COVID mask. <laughs> and then my boss, Big Mike, who's our friend too, but he, like my brother guy's all in one company. Morgan, yeah. my brother, Big Mike, and then my good friend Christian, he's actually just opened up a school in Highly Miley. 
Okay. I, I wish I knew the name right now, but he's like a fifth degree black belt jujitsu, so they just opened up a jujitsu. Oh, okay. But they got striking, like Zach Zane's teaching striking over oh, there. Okay, okay. Shout out better Zach. Yeah. Yep. All the Maui boys putting yeah. in that work. But yep. When you came back to Maui, when did you did you start off like did you meet Bubs when you first came back or did you start off somewhere else? Like No, when I first came back I actually liked singing a lot with Marty Dredd and then there was okay. the band the Cryptones that backed Marty up and Kaikwa Haleakala was the bass player for that band. So okay. he was like a really good friend of mine from the Big Island. Yeah. yeah. So I used to work a lot with the Cryptones and Marty Dredd and then I had like one I think it was like some kind of thing going on in Paia one time like a talent show or something this is when Bubs because Bubs knew my music because I had one CD out called Higher yeah. Calling mm -hmm. I mean the choice we made with my first CD and uh, so I was down rapping on the mic and Bubs heard me and he's like oh that sounds like real reggae so he came up to me and, he's, and then we met he's like oh tell man oh I heard about you Yeah. because Bubs had his one record that just came out too his yeah. first record so that's mm -hmm. where we first met and then we yeah. like became which, which on Deeper in Love that's when yeah, 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 yeah. oh yeah, man yeah. I was like yeah and that's cool though man we became friends and then I went to his house and the first song we ever recorded was the title track to our first CD Higher Calling yep. so we recorded no time that. feast time yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uso knows all my songs we've yep. been playing with Roots and Creation for yeah, years so, shout out <laughs> Tailman been, he been killing it with us for years man yes, yeah. always killing it but, but yeah so when you link up with Bubs that's when you so record we, that Higher yeah, Calling yeah, and then Bubs yeah. actually went to music recording school and uh, I remember that Hollywood. in California. Or, so yeah. then, it, then it worked out me and I was like on a trip to California to go like trim and humble, visit my cousins in LA. And mm -hmm. then so it worked out perfect. We started recording our, the first CD, Higher Calling. Mm -hmm. Recorded Cali. most of that in yeah. Hollywood in his little yeah. apartment he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was super cool. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, even, even for like when you just started doing your music, right? You kind of, you link up with Bob. What was one of your... Your favorite, I guess, like writing inspirations, like what, what, what would out of obviously, like you know, smoke one, you know what I mean? Probably get on in a meditation vibe, but like, what yes. was your process? Your like, writing process, yeah, like yeah. how you, how would you write your lyrics back then? Well, like when I first started in the Shakers on Kauai, pretty much I just freestyled for like three, four years, and then mm -hmm. gradually would get get a song. But mostly, I did it different ways, like. Sometimes if someone, a producer sends me a beat, you do the obvious way and you can like write a song to it. So you'd mm -hmm. be like singing, writing, and that's how you can, and then you write a whole song. Mm -hmm. Or there's times where like, I'll take a beat from YouTube or just some dub and I'll make up my own song and then bring it to the producer and then they'll make a beat similar. Mm -hmm. Or there's times where I used to have a karaoke machine I literally get stacks of tapes, bro. Probably 30 tapes of me just singing and rapping reggae. Mm -hmm. oh, just 40 tapes. Cassette tapes. Cassettes, like just because this, I had this pretty mean character karaoke thing where you could record from tape to cd to tape yeah. and then you could go tape to tape and even try harmonies and this was back in a haiku in like oh, the early 2000s is, <laughs> yeah, was, the back, then, was mean, bro. Yeah, well, back then you were probably like oh this is so mean bro, right? I, didn't <laughs> count it too. I wasn't that good at harmonies though so like here and there i would yeah. try Bubs Jaleo, bust your harmonies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. no so i literally so sometimes i can do a whole freestyle Mm -hmm. and then go back and listen to the song because I can make up a chorus and then freestyle off the chorus yeah. without ever writing it. Yeah. So another process would be I'd have the free, I'd listen to my freestyle back and then just fill in the blanks or take out any parts I don't like. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can have a freestyle and it's 60% mm -hmm. good already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you only got to write 40%, so it's kind of easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and then there's other times in the studio where you'll just go line for line, like, and just record it as you go. Plenty of Jamaicans do that too. They don't really write it. And uh, Rob Simeon does that a yeah, lot. Yeah, just write it in the studio and just. So yeah, then yeah. you just bang out lines, couple lines. Yeah. You get your chorus in your mind. So that's like three, four ways to mm -hmm. make one song. I like always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. I guess it's like whatever the the vibe is. And when you hear the beat, be like, okay, yeah, yeah. maybe write them on yeah. your own time. You, you think your first song you ever wrote was your most like. Like the best lyrics well, you ever. I'm trying think? to remember the first song I wrote. Oh yeah, because you know, like, usually know. like somebody like the first song they come out with, I swear like they first knew how to put their emotions on paper and. Kind of, I know you was kind of freestyling, that's why. Yeah, I freestyled so much before I actually wrote a song. Oh yeah, so so yeah. is it like what what would be your your like your best work in your head like in in your head like like some of my best lyrics. Yeah, like bro, like I, I don't even know where I was at that time when I thought of that, but damn, you know what I mean? Like that was. What good one? Well, a lot. I like my song "Spirit Engaging." Mm -hmm, it's yeah. a pretty nuts one. And I remember I was just driving in the car, and I just started going. Right now, people didn't change it, and yeah. then that turned into a whole song. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. 
As with that kind too, yeah? Luton oh, Fire. Yeah, Luton nice Fire. Luton yeah. Fire. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, speaking yeah. of that, then, how you got Luton Fire on that rhythm? Was you and Bob's and hit him up? Or? Yeah, yeah, you just hit him up. His manager wanted to charge us like 1400 But oh, I think Luton, Luton liked the beat, though, because we mm. never like paid 1400 yeah. mm. And then yeah, Luton and actually one. bypassed his manager, and he called us back. He's all, I'll do it for 700 man. <laughs> so we're like, okay, shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah. shine the manager. Yeah. <laughs> and what, the beat was, was produced by Bob's? Yeah, though. Bob's yeah. Productions. That beat is sick. Yeah. Yeah, that is a sick one, man. Spirit engaging, man. Check them yeah. out, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, speaking of that, shout out all of your platforms, man, that, that you like freaking on. Oh, my music's on yeah. I'm iTunes, Amazon, MP3, Spotify, Everything, what, yeah. every single site. YouTube. Yeah. YouTube, yeah. all kind, yeah. Stream yeah. them, blast them, play them. And then search them out, yep, Tailman, man. I got the a universal. single that's, the single's not on any of my CDs, but it's the chapter two to... Uh, Spirit engaging. Check it. Spiritual awakening with Warrior King. Yeah, what, what so. feature, yeah. Feature that one him. you can check out. You never even probably heard that one. I gotta <laughs> check that one. Yeah, yeah it's on unless you showed us on, yeah, like spiritual on. awakening. Yeah, because yeah. what happens when you engage when your spirit engages? Uh, yeah, so how your spirit awakens. awakens cause so you can hit him. That's up. why I make chapter two, but you nobody even knows. Up. <laughs> that, that's on all digital platforms. You'd hit that guy up for get featured though. Same yeah, thing Warrior, with Warrior King was only I think like f- six hundred maybe. Oh, They're cool okay. brother guys. If they uh, like the beat, yeah, they'll give you one pretty yeah. good deal. And then, so they'll you pay that, and then the, all the royalties would be all yours. You know? Yeah, they, you yeah. just pay them, and they don't. It's like because it's, yeah. it's our song, our yeah. beat, our lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they yeah. make up original. The, the other one I have was with Junior Kelly. That was super stoked because that yeah. was like I three of my one. favorite yeah. guys. Junior Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say like Wicked Mondem. Well, other than those guys. What will be your next like top two guys you would like to record your favorite well, like if you well, could ask like some legends yeah. you, know, you already did Luton and um well I mean I would probably want to record yeah. with Von Benjamin but he was one of my favorites but he same passed. here yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Same but here. if I was going to record probably like bro, I don't know there's so many guys it's kind of yeah. hard yeah. but like uh I just spit Capleton would be sick I I like mm-hmm. Queen Amiga I like this ch- uh, girl Rima from St. Croix she's super sick bro she's mm-hmm. kind of like Desiree but mm-hmm. she's okay. super good Rima check her out yeah. maybe like Martin Campbell too no, I like oh yeah you guys love Martin <laughs> Campbell yeah, yeah. some classics yeah. would be like I mean Luciano would be sick oh, yeah. Yeah. Garnet Silk would have been nuts but he's like a he's passed a long time ago mm-hmm. but he was a legend yeah, yeah. When you first started playing like Roots music over here, what, um, what was the spot um, to play at Charlie's? Or what, or what? Charlie's a bunch, but then we used to play at like the, uh, what was that, the Maui Brew Pub, and then we played a bunch at the Hard Rock Cafe, and then the one place... They, oh, Hard Rock, that was in uh, Lahaina? Yeah, Lahaina side, oh, yeah, yeah, and the Maui that, Brew right, Pub yeah. was mm-hmm. in Lahaina, and then mm-hmm. they had the one place, I forget what it was called right now, it was like right on Front Street upstairs, you guys is probably... Lulu, uh, maybe. Moose. No, it was on the right, though. Oh my God, I forget, bro. We used to fly from... Because actually on Kauai, the first band I was in was the Shakers reggae band. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, some of his songs was hits over here. Like, you guys, you probably remember the song, Who's Gonna Hold You Tonight? Mm-hmm. Baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so that was my best friend, Ron Rhodes. That was the, he, he was the founder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish him. <laughs> I don't see him that good, though. My yeah. voice is a little funny. but <laughs> What was the places a, for playing in Kauai, too, man, back then? So where there. I started was at the Point Beach Cafe. That place got taken Close out on, by yeah. Hurricane Aniki. But that was like... Oh. Oh, okay. That place Used was to bring a, back landmarks. Yeah, yeah. But that place was a blessing because that's where I was telling you guys like that was the first place I ever sang live in my yeah. life. Mm-hmm. And what happened was the Shakers actually originated in uh, 1973 in uh, Berkeley, California. The Shakers mm-hmm. band, the guy that wrote that song, or that was his band. He had it like three or yeah. four different times. Mm-hmm. I wasn't like the third or fourth Shakers. But what happened was they were playing at the Point Beach Cafe. I was like 19. I snuck into the club. And then there was these two Jamaican dudes. So the band was on one side, two Jamaicans on the other, DJing. And then these two hippie Rasta chicks with the Jamaicans. Mm-hmm. And then I was with like two of my friends and my one good buddy, Craig Palmer from Cali, that moved to Kauai and like we were roommates and shit. Mm-hmm. Somehow I met the guy. He was super funny because he looked a little, oh, no, never mind. He kind of looked like, if you, you guys remember Wilbur Kukenmeyer from the old school surf mag. <laughs> just a little, cr- oh, you guys probably don't know. No, even- <laughs> I was going to say negative. Back, hey, back the the viewers, day, yeah, some of the viewers yeah, probably somebody do. Somebody might yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, somebody sorry, might know. Craig, sorry, Craig. If you, uh, you're not going to see this. <laughs> nah, he's my good friend, but I used to think he looked like the cartoon character Wilbur Kukenmeyer. But, but anyway, bro, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, bro. But anyway, I would, these guys would take me surfing all the time, yeah? And I would oh. just make him play reggae. Because I started listening to reggae all the way like 12 years old. I got addicted, but I first heard reggae at like 8 in Santa Cruz from these Rasta dudes that my mom's best yeah. friend knew. Mm-hmm. But that's one whole other story. <laughs> so freaking... Bruh. 
<laughs> no, but yeah, I like I like go back to also um, back in the Playboy Beach yeah. Cafe right there. I got it, I got it. I'm not yeah. gonna lose this one. <laughs> almost though. <laughs> almost, almost. You know, so right there, back at the Playboy Beach Cafe, and there's the two Rastas DJing, and I'm like over there skanking, and my friends are tired of listening to me sing all the time, freaking driving, surfing, making. Yeah, yeah. I like they they gotta hear reggae, which they're not even that into, <laughs> and then they gotta listen to me sing along with every song, and I don't even know the li- I only know some lyrics, so I'm like making up my own. This is before yeah. I ever sang live. I'm like singing to my bros, but that was super funny. This is back when I was like 19. Yeah. So right there, I, I'm, but I knew how to skank. Big Island Days already into the room. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> so right there, in. I was skanking. Hey, and then hot. the two hippie ladies was like, hey, how come your friend knows how to skank like, like that? These two hippie Rasta chicks actually asked my friends and they're like, oh my God, this dude seems reggae to his own time, bro. <laughs> so your skank would then catch their eye, bro. But not the like, Rasta. This guy can skank yeah, real, chicks, They was chirping. That's He's so they, feeling it. So bro, who is this white dude just going hot? <laughs> What's funny? Skanking. So right there, my friends were like, oh, can he rap? And then they, the the girls was like, yeah, go tell the Rastas or their boyfriends, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like all freaked out, bro, don't tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck bro, up. Because the place the was up. pretty, it had like 200 people. <laughs> Point oh, Beach okay. Cafe used to rage, yeah. bro. And like, it's kind of a make or break moment, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. bro, either one, they're going to always ask for you to come on or the two, like, yeah, don't ever come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah straight, <laughs> out, straight out, straight out. The bro, moment. So, bro, right there, I said, okay, so on the next band break, I went up, the Rastas let me up and it was actually two guys I heard of. <clears throat> one of them was Tony Gitz who mm-hmm. back in the day did all kinds of reggae in Oahu and then the other guy was Super Jerry and I had two of his cassettes at the time in my collection Super Jerry mm-hmm. it's kind of a funny little reggae singer Super Jerry he had like a little funny voice but he was cool <laughs> but right there so I go up they gave me the mic and I just started freestyling and bra people just started coming all gathering around and it got kind of hype my yeah. first time ever in front of a crowd so the rosters no, no, were like but you, you freestyled before before not that. on a mic oh, so you, but you, so you first but time then, then I just though. sing all the time to myself yeah, yeah. whatever oh, okay, okay. so you've been getting yeah, ready yeah, for yeah, this yeah, moment yeah, yeah. pretty you much been, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah okay, the okay. had to continue, listen to me yeah. in the car every continue, time you know, yep. surfing so right there I fucking did pretty good and like Super Jerry got all freaked out. He just yeah. like grabbed the mic and I never forgot. He's like, Super Jimmy, he's like Super Jimmy, Super Jimmy, I did that Super Jimmy. And he just like took the mic and then so I was like, Oh, that was cool, everybody was psyched. But on the next break, their girlfriends were like, You gotta go rap again, you gotta go rap again. <laughs> Was yeah. hype. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. two Rasta Howley chicks was with the uh, two black brown Rastas. So right there, they, so I went back because I was like, ah, oh, he took the mic. They're good. Yeah. So, but then I went back. The crowd got hyped. And then right there, what happened was, so this guy that was in all the original Shakers, his mm-hmm. name was Bruce. Oh, I forget. Bill Wallace. He actually lived on Kauai, and that's why Ron Rhodes came to Kauai. Yeah. Because Ron Rhodes came to Kauai with his wife to start a new Shakers and live in Hawaii. And then okay. Bruce, I mean Bill Wallace, had a big rock band on Kauai called the. Oh, the Blonde Boys, but he was in the original Shakers from 1973. Mm-hmm. So that's why the Shakers got together mm-hmm. and they happened to be playing there. So Bill Wallace comes and he's all, man, Ron Rose, the founder of this band, he really liked you. And he told me where he worked and told me I got to go meet the guy. Mm-hmm. So like I ended up calling Ron Rhodes, went down to where he worked, met him. Mm-hmm. And then I became in the Shakers for like 10 years on Kauai. And that oh. was the guy that sang Baby Please. And yeah, yeah. Tonight. Man, that's... But yeah, so like speaking of that, like throughout your whole career, especially being on the islands, bro, like tell us like um how was it kind of like with people? I know guys probably look at you, oh, who's this holy guy that coming on? But when they hear you jam, oh, like, oh, okay. I've had to face that all yeah. my whole career. Yeah, so like, like kind of <laughs> tell us about that. Like how how has it been like dealing with that? Like well, so. sometimes it's been funny. Like I walk up, oh, I'm in the reggae band, I'm gonna sing, and sometimes the bouncers like barely believe me. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 like what? But the funniest story about like people not believing I had skills was when I was like 22, I think I was like 22, 23 or something. And I went to visit my youngest brother in college and he went to college in Bellingham, Washington. Mm-hmm. Okay. My brother's half black, six so he was doing lacrosse, like he's yokes, he's solid. He's like, he's the dude that used psychology but I'll tell you another story after about mm-hmm. back to the boxing okay because that's how he knew I could stay in shape if I did something I loved enough because I'm the yeah. kind I kind of get in shape then you get chubby then you get in shape then mm-hmm. you do a health cleanse but anyway yeah, back, that's my excuse yeah, yeah. but <laughs> anyway back, do back to the other no. story so um, my in Bellingham Washington it's close mm-hmm. to the uh, border of Canada right mm-hmm. and then there's a club called the Funky Planet where you could be 18 and older because my brother was just in college so he wasn't yeah. even 21 okay but so you could go to this club. So Cho people from Washington would go to this club. It was right on the border in Canada, the Funky Planet. And every week they had a freestyle hip hop rap contest. Yeah. Okay. So right there, bro, we go in there and we're partying. There's like 500 people in this place. It's banging, and, and like me and my bro are having fun and eating. But my brother really wanted me to enter the contest. Yeah. And freestyle because I had been in the Shakers already for like three years, four yeah. years maybe. Okay. So you just working on your chops. So yeah, I was I pretty mean, good. Yeah. I was like way better and confident. And he, so, but the thing was, there was this big black MC. 
And Chuck, bunch of guys already entered, so I went up to the dude and I'm like, yo, man, I'm visiting from Hawaii, I wanna enter the rap contest. And he's mm-hmm. like, look at me, oh, man, there's no more places, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, the all, t- booked yeah, the it's typical, all booked up, it's all The typical, the typical, like, stereotype. Right? Straight yeah, up yeah. tells me, he, like, denies I would've me. thought it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's stri- I was just looking like a full little surfer dude, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So right there, I go back to my brother, my brother, the guy won't let me, and my brother was kinda like, no way, I want you to do this, bro, you gotta mm-hmm. do this. Like, so I went back you. one more time and asked. And the guy denied me again, bro. Motherfucker. And me, I get a little huffy. So, like, I went back to my brother, and he's trying to tell me to ask again. So I started kind of, like, arguing with my younger brother, who was like, I'm all looking up at him. I'm like, bro, I fucking asked the guy three or two times. I'm not going back. Sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, But, bro, and my brother was kind of getting huffy. He almost never gets huffy. He's, like, the most calm of everybody in our family. Okay, so what? So right there, people notice, though. They're like, bro, maybe these guys are serious about that deep <laughs> rapping. So some guys went and told the MC, like, uh, maybe we should, like, let's just get yeah, this. My brother look kind of pissed that he's freaking yoked <laughs> solid, bro. Yeah. And so, like, the guy's like, okay. Someone came over and said, hey, he's going to let you in. Someone came and got me. So I went and I was like, okay. So then everybody's rapping. And then I did my reggae freestyles over their hip-hop beats. And I ended up tying for first place. Nice. Bruh, straight up tied that night guys first place. Guys tripping. Yeah, Let's go. That, yeah. And there was always this Jamaican chick that there was a, a, Jamaica, a Canadian-born Jamaican girl that was a mean hip-hop rapper. She was kind of young. And then her friend was this short little brother. He was sick, too. He got third place. Okay. Well, he got second because he always, usually yeah. it's like she always gets first and he always gets second. Yeah. Too. But the classic thing was right there. So me and the chick tied for first. I told her, hey, you can have the 50 bucks Canadian. We don't have to split it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. she, she like wins that every week. It's a little $50 Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> but right there, bro, the brother was like, even though that's his partner, they work together. They got a manager and a studio. Like the little brother all out claimed, yeah, it might have been a tie, but we know who probably won that shit. He all out <laughs> oh, claimed I won yeah, it. Yeah, Her yeah. own partner, yeah. little partner. So right there, I came back next week with my brother Ramon. And freaking one first place. Nice. $50 Canadian. So, yeah. I was like 23 yeah. or something. And then they brought me to their studio and uh-huh. then had me do some recording. And yeah. they had like this Jamaican manager chick. It was pretty classic. See oh, that? Yeah, bro. So Brad, that was a classic. That's a journey, honey. Brad, that's that's a journey. Much, that pretty much explains tale at every, because all the shows, back. I know guys is looking like, oh, what this guy? Until he jumps on the mic. Then they are like, okay, bro. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. See, I see, I yeah, see. Speaking of it. that, I'm just going to tell this story, bro. Like when we went to, um, Remember when you got invited to Molokai for yeah, that graduation party? Yeah, 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 that party. was so sick. Bro, we went to a straight, bro, a that straight Molokai, bro, party, bro. straight Molokai style. They, they bought us in on fishing boat, bro, everything stayed. They, they put us in the hotel, offered, te- they wanted Tail Man, bro. They, they took bought Tail Man, and then we came rich in creation, and <laughs> of course, Uso Man was, was with yeah. them, so we didn't jump. But, bro, we, we didn't play after Jeremiah, bro, and that's... Um, that's, bro, that's more yeah, he's hard. That's like yeah, Swain like guy. Yeah, yeah. So oh, bro, and, cool. and that party was all Hawaiian in there. So when tail <laughs> went on, my guys was tripping. It was like, huh? But when uh, so, oh, same thing fire. like his story, bro, right? When he got on the mic, my guys fire. was all like, okay, that's fire. Uh, I see you, bro. bro I see the funniest you. part about that was the dad of the like Hawaiian Filipino guy that hired me to play for. I think it was like his his brother. I it, it was either his, I think it was brother or his nephew was graduating. graduating. Party, yeah. But their dad was this classic like Filipino Hawaiian guy from Molokai. Mm-hmm. He was classic, just, bro, yeah. <laughs> he was cool though, but it was just so funny. He came up to me, he's like, oh, bro, I gotta tell you something, so funny. I'm like, oh, what's that? He's all, bro, it was so funny. Like, everybody loved what you was doing, but they just couldn't even, like the older people. Yeah. But he's like, bro, they had to talk their self truth. Like, he went, oh, he went local Hawaii, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he not one regular Hawaii, but he went local Hawaii. And then they would like, once they convinced themselves yeah. of that, like then they was just yeah. vibing the music. Yeah. But the dad actually told me that like for a funny story, bro, it was classic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bro. They that needed night. their own psychology. Yeah. Yeah. The young bro. guys was just raging. Bro, the young guys yeah. in, that just was graduating high school that year, bro, they, would, they knew every every song, bro, like word yeah. for word pretty much, just skanking, bro. Like, Right, so, bro, that must be it was me, bro. It was a good show, good fun we had too, bro. That's the that was the weekend we got stuck bro, at because we had that huge an storm. Day. Yeah, oh. the huge waves hit Malaya. We couldn't go back. Bro, that nice. was, those waves was bigger than it. I feel, I feel like ever been, bro. bro those three one. days on Molokai felt like how long? Bro, I feel like we kept running into the same people. Bro, every time, like one week, bro. bro we three went days to the store, like bro. But it was good fun, bro, because yeah. we had good company, man. Us. Yeah, yeah. Who else had that? Freaking Kanaka Man. Yeah, Kanaka Man. Jale, all the boys. Merv, all the boys. Trami. Yeah. So, man, I had all the boys, like, man. So, it was good fun, man. Yeah, yeah. That was me. But, yeah, but, but I was the only Holly where I was so funny. But must like, be gratifying, though. Like, yeah. Must be gratifying for you, like, for like, when you, um, when that crowd, like, how do you say, all the young kids, whatever, they knew every 
you know, every lyric mm-hmm. to yeah, the song. Yeah, feel, it feels good. Right, right? I was like, oh, fuck, yeah. Man. You know yep. what I mean? Reaching when the, the crowd youth, is, cause... you get so much energy from the crowd. You can feel the vibe, bro. It's like, yeah. It's like yeah. you share energy. It's yeah. Yeah, sad, bro. Bro. yeah, you can feel the vibe man, from the crowd, for sure. Feed off that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels so good. Yeah. It feels good. Like, yeah. honestly, like, somehow back in the Shakers days, because I was in the 90s, there wasn't, like, any white surfer reggae rappers. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And bro, when I rap, I told you Oman comes true. Like when I sing, you'll always feel my soul 100%, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Bro, somehow Kauai Days had some of the loudest crowds till this day I almost ever heard. Oh, yeah, like yeah. 200 people at the freaking, we play Rob's Good Time Grill or like the Kalapaki Brew Pub. But mm-hmm. I don't know, there was just these, but the Poipu Beach Cafe, like in my rawest days. Mm-hmm. There were some of these moments, I don't know how the crowd just would scream like louder. And, then, and I would be like this, and then like the all the old guys in the band would like tease me because <laughs> everybody in that band was like yeah. twice my age in the yeah, shoes, yeah, bro. Yeah. I was like 19, 21. <laughs> these guys were like in their 40s and 50s. Right? Yeah, <laughs> young, <laughs> you was young shit, boy. That yeah. freaking classic. Now, yeah, for sure. I can see it on tell my, He know how to work the crowd good, man. Yeah. Freaking, he can f- feed off them. He's the one that can bust the. Hey, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The last shows was pretty fun yeah. at the playground. Yeah, you can. Yeah, fun. man. Shout out to Tail for always just holding it down, man. Yeesh. Yeah, even though. Yeah, he, thanks, bro. Yeah, even though he might not look like on Roots Man, he is on Roots Man. Oh, for bro, sure. yeah. yeah, holding it down. <laughs> even, yeah, even the way you process all your music and everything, like you know, your whole journey you take with every song. You're not just putting out. On random, ah, you know, we had this in the back. We just control mm-hmm. on, just for keep make space. Yeah. It's hard not lyrics. Every it song like, I try to make. Bro, my it best, seems you know like I mean? every song you make, bro, you just spit in like your like you always said, your rawest form, bro. Uh-huh. So yeah, hey, big ups yeah. to you, bro, for yeah, keeping bro, that original, like that, bro. Yeah, because like, you've been doing it for a long time, bro. So shout out to you, man. For yeah, keep, what nineteen? I'm almost fifty four. So what is that like? How many years is that? That's plan that. Right That's now. plan. <laughs> well, I'm gonna ask you. Yeah, so speaking of that, I'm gonna ask you what I ask all the artists. I guess like, 26 years. Yeah. Or something. I'm gonna ask you what I ask all the artists though. Is um, how you kind of balance your work life with your music life, with your working out, boxing life. You know, how do, how you kind of deal? Well, with I wish I had. I wish I was better at hustling my music so that I had more opportunity to just play more music, travel. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm pretty lucky because I have a part-time job with lighting production. Mm-hmm. My brother's company, and we work for different companies, and it's like, pays good, but super seasonal. And then I'm a farmer, you know, mm-hmm. me and me, a ganja farmer. Yeah, we can, we can get to that. Uh, after. We can yeah, get to yeah. that. So I like, I like my untaxed dollars. Me not care what Bobby Lan said. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All good. Yeah. But yeah, so that keeps me busy, and that's like a good balance. And yeah. then... um the music so between all three and mm-hmm. then i'm i'm pretty much still on my own my brothers have wives and kids but me i just i just, I just got me and my family yep. and friends you know yep. I mean? yeah that's yeah. all man yeah so not too street. bad <laughs> i can balance yeah. it all good but i'm definitely right now really feeling like i want to get out and sing more mm-hmm. for sure do for more sure. live yeah yeah just get out because that's not real too much studio. i want to connect with ah, i do that too but yeah but i have a whole project with bubs it's like on the vaults for like eight years mm-hmm. just hiding over there i want a whole record <laughs> that's all like me and, and jaleo too yeah, we're yeah. just just waiting chilling i'm, Might supposed, not have I'm supposed to go do a project in kansas this guy keeps teasing me he sent me all these beats youth mon youth mon records you seen him on instagram brought a guy's nuts he yeah. makes good reggae Somehow he has some of the songs get on the Billboard mm-hmm. reggae charts. So he's already, I've been writing songs, but he keeps like postponing. I'm going to hit him up soon, but kind of cool. Go make some mean songs in Kansas. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. reggae in Kansas. Who would have thought? Yeah, who would have thought for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like going back to the ganja, like, so I know you're into that too, about right? the plant and stuff. So I love kinda, growing the herb. It's like a yeah, but just kind of tell, tell us your interest in it and like kind of what got you started with kind of herbin. Oh, well. <laughs> we just started with that. <laughs> I got started way too way young. Area. Big Island days, Kalapana and all that. Oh, so in Big Island you started, not Cali. But the kind of, the funny part is I got addicted to reggae and herb on the same night. Yeah, nah, it goes, it goes much, together. Bro. It goes it together. Go together. Like, I already liked reggae, but I still had my heavy metal. I'd yeah. already tried yeah. herb, but I wasn't like, like on Stoner yet. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, but bro, it's pretty funny. I was visiting Santa Cruz one summer. Like, the lady that originally showed me reggae when I was eight, because she was dating a Rasta mm-hmm. guy, my mom's best friend, Lisa. Okay. Her son was one of my best friends. So one summer, when I had just been living in Hawaii not that long, well, maybe a few years, I think I was like 13, and I went back for a visit to see my old best friend and him. 
his mom mm-hmm. but she was a classic lady like she was letting she let us smoke shakes 13 you know we smoke <laughs> a bunch of shake bud oh, yes. <laughs> and then we were like playing with wax candles all stony me and her son Ezra and, yeah, that's, and then, we might have to cut that out because my son's 13 oh, so. we, just, we never had any of the iPhones Matt, back then bro. Matt, shit started Matt, just jokes, this just is like jokes. 40 years ago cause Matt, yeah, more than that yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 something years ago so not too bad yep. you can cut them though <laughs> no 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 I'm just joking yeah, yeah. but going back to your <laughs> no, so, no but right there yeah. this is when I got like addicted to pot and reggae it was pretty funny bro so she was jamming this mean mix from like a reggae radio station in santa cruz she mm-hmm. had like a tape with all these mental songs and we were just like all blind young playing with the candle wax listening to reggae and then mm-hmm. like the one one of jimmy cliff's meanest songs came on you guys heard the one roots radical i'm mm-hmm. a radical oh, yeah. roots radical oh, yeah, so I didn't call for that. yeah so that song came on and i was See that, just bro. Like, you, bro. Bro. you're looking at me like you thought Southern Russia is yeah. the original, huh? Well, I thought, I mean, yeah. It's yeah. Jimmy Cliff. I feel like Jimmy Cliff. If you hear the original. Anybody watching? Yeah. Roots, bro. Roots Radical by Southern Russia is not original. <laughs> no, you got Jimmy listen. Cliff yeah, is the original. original. You got to look up the Jimmy Cliff when it's hard, bro. It was like one of his more rootsy songs. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I didn't know. Yeah, bro, I, looks, but the, I feel yeah. like I should have known that, though. I, nah, I feel like a lot of people like watching are not going to know that, so. Bro, Jimmy Cliff is the originator of that song. Mm-hmm. It's sick, bro. That is a sick but song. But that, that was a song. Yeah, I was just like in a trance, bro. Mm-hmm. I went back to Hawaii and pretty much was giving all my heavy metal tapes away. I was done with them. And then I just started <laughs> collecting reggae from like 13 years old all the way till before CDs went out of freaking uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's all too high tech for me, now, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, herb. so farming, I just love farming. Just I love connecting with the herb, doing the soil, yeah. the dirt. It's just satisfying when it comes yeah. out healthy and amazing. How much so how much like hours per day do you spend on the plants? Yeah, you don't need to check them every day. Not every day. Okay, then per week then. Oh man, I don't know. Just whatever they need, you know what yeah. I mean? You gotta you know, so you're not watering it. You, no, no, yeah. I water like oh, yeah. depending every two to three days. You gotta fertilize, yeah. top feed, spray, you gotta do all kinds of stuff. Prune, top feed, spray, steak. Open them up. See, like, so, so a that's, lot of work, yeah. <laughs> So what you go like? What every three days you go there? Yeah, every two to three days I like check whatever I'm working with. Yeah, and just make sure everything's good. Prune them, spray them. Yeah. I don't use as much fertilizer as I used to. I like doing more the to top feed and getting the soil nice, and then I use like just a little bit of liquid fertilizer. Mm-hmm. But there's all kind of pests yeah. around when you grow herb. You gotta like spray for it. But you try oh, to yeah. find the more organic pesticides and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like if you're a young if you're a young ganja farmer just starting up what would be like the advice because right you've been doing it for how long already like so what would be some young ganja farmer advice you give them for, you especially get, with the like the soil here in Maui and like the air and the pretty like, much you probably would be easier to get clones mm-hmm. so you don't have to like make them from one baby seed yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you got to get some lights to, like, make your plant a little bigger. Wait, first first of all, for people that don't know what clones is, explain what clones is. <laughs> oh, <bro. I'm> not, <laughs> clones is just cuttings from, a, like, a mother. So you grow a plant from seed, okay. then you make sure it's a female. Mm-hmm. And then you find nice little branches, and they make cuttings. cuttings and then they stick them in cloning solution, and then you can grow a plant from that. See? Clones. Okay. Like, yeah, clones. There you go, clones. So there's all different strains, mm-hmm. yeah. Pretty much, though, you just... Start off with clones. Then. But, the more you but know. have someone already grow you a plant, so you know got to do all that. You yeah. know what I mean? Buy, so, like, a little... So plant. all your plants is clones, or you get some seed? Mostly mine are all clones. clones yeah. yeah, yeah. But every once in a while, we'll grow a seed to make a mother. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you just uh, pretty much get a plant. Then you, you can just buy, like, Roots Organic soil. Mm-hmm. You, you know, get your pot. Sometimes, when it, if your plant's small, you'll start it in a smaller pot. Once it's bigger for that, you'll transplant, transplant it to the next it. pot. Pretty much, you just want to get nice, fluffy soil, get like chicken manure, yeah. back on, mm-hmm. just Mulch. different things. I mean, I kind of just use the nice dirt and then I just add amendments to yeah. it. Like maybe I like to put azomite, I like to put chicken manure, I like to mm-hmm. put just different amendments. There's yeah. all kinds of different amendments for the for the nitrogen part. Mm-hmm. And then for flowering, you got to just use different amendments, more phosphate type mm-hmm. amendments. Oh, okay. Gano. I use a lot of Roots Organics products. Oh, sorry. But I used to get all crazy and put like six different things in my water. <laughs> thought I was going to make some super crazy bud, and like pretty much was just Same. over fertilizing back in the day. <laughs> hey, so at least you learn, bro. Yeah, yeah. You so learned. you don't have to spend quite as much on the fertilizers they tell you. Like I still buy a couple nice liquid ferts, put that in the water, but I only mm-hmm. do that like barely once a week. Okay. And then I'll like top feed on the soil and, and just 
freaking, I don't know, I make them way easier. See? Yeah. You know, but the hardest part is you got to drying and trimming the bud. That's the hard yeah. part. Yeah. But you, you get the trimming, though. Yeah, but everybody know. knows I'm crazy. I don't even like other people for trim my yeah, bud. This guy's yeah. the trimmer of all trims, man. This guy trim, 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 this guy trim mean, man. Trim. trim all my own bud. Like, trim me, trim, trim, trim. If there's a trimming competition, he'd be the he trimmer. Would, he would uh, win, I'm the man. trim master, yeah. but I'm driving myself nuts because, I like, when I grow in my brother and guys freaking... I'm always like, gotta go retrain, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Before we get on, much, before bro. we switch to the next subject, though, what is your your favorite strain? Bro, I love choke different strains. Top three. Right top now, three. I'm kind of like top three, man. Well, the ones I get right now, I like my punch breath. I got this new one, Sixes. It's pretty nuts, bro. Sixes, super okay. potent. But never back in the that. day, I used to like this one I grew was the Purple Kush Skunk Dog. It was super nice. Oh, Skunk Dog. You can't go wrong with that. Now, but I've there's only, so much mean strains in the mainland right I've now. only liked Alaskan Thunderfuck. Yeah, I remember oh. that from when I was a Hard teenager. Find, huh? no. Not everybody usually get that. No, but only because yeah. of the name. Yeah, um, that shit's yeah, I, I'll say it every. That's my. It's my mm-hmm. favorite because that's none, that, that, none that, even in the country. Yeah. 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 Alaskan <laughs> thunderfuck. Bro. That's freaking funny. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's the healing of the nation. Bro. Yeah, so it's not a, it's drug, like a superhero. To it's just a plant. Hey, that shit was grow. classic. I remember yeah. that from my high like high school days. It's an old one, but yeah. it's mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't even I like think I tried it. I don't even think I tried it, but I'm just gonna say that's my favorite. I like Girl Scout cookies. Oh, I get one going too. right now, Mindo Breath. That smells pretty nuts, bro. I mm-hmm. like all kinds. Of what is yours? Yeah, I like how I like how it smells. All this is different, huh? Oh my what is, God, what is your favorite? Strain? I would say either the Skunk Dog Classic or even the GDP's Granddaddy Perps. Yeah, yeah, those are pretty yeah. nuts. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> some good strains, well, right? Yeah, there. yeah. yeah. I mean the pineapple express you kind of go around with that that's just like yeah. one have you had, you ever tried to do the cross joint what like put different strains in one joint well they call it top pineapple express the movie the you joint in a joint you know oh like, the they, one with the yeah, yeah, yeah like right, cross no, joint. my friend did before yeah? my friend no will tell it's probably not as was it a success or was it kind of like that was kind of working bro like yeah. 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 like all coming in bro, <laughs> the, trifecta. <laughs> the trifecta I think it kind of worked bro. he yeah. freaking made him work bro. that is oh, hilarious bro. cross joint huh? yeah <laughs> so I funny. think I attempted one but it wasn't like you know that's pretty like, ah, fuck. that takes some freaking skill yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> no way I can ever do that classic yeah. Yeah, but before we, you know, finish it up, you know, I asked Tillman if he could, you know, freestyle on the mic, you know, for <laughs> Bro, us I don't a know quick how one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I only feel it's suitable because you've been talking about freestyling throughout the whole podcast. So why don't we go ahead and give them a taste of, you know, yeah, what's, son, what's down, what you man. got? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, before you even start, man, shout out Tailman because yeah, yeah, all his freestyles. Is all off top. Yeah, right? Usman, all. thanks for having yeah. me, brother not, Brian. Yeah, not Glad written down. Thank you for coming on, yeah, bro. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, yeah. Nothing what written. You guys are doing. Nothing written down, bro. All off top of the oh, head. Freestyle, right freestyle. Right now. Yeah. What are you gonna plan from the phone? Oh, dang. Culture vibes. Sick. Freestyle for the people there. Tell me I've been every time. Shout out, tell me. Yeah. Hit in the roots. Give them the culture, may not go Tell them one more time from the top of my head I will tell ya, fire it off and blaze <laughs> Me have to change that, turn it up a little Play a little bit Feel the vibes, got the vibes of the bus Feel the vibes, got the vibes of the bus I know you love the style, tell your man you can trust I know you love the vibes, tell your man you can trust Take the tire, blaze the fire me a fi walk on the high wire Chop down the wicked Bless up from Jack Yes, me a go pray for a better word, sir Said me a go blaze, blaze like fire Said me a go blaze, blaze like fire Lyrics again and the style it na stop Tell your man again me come fi take it from the top Give me come again me set the vibes a fi drop Wicked a fi run cause the good can't stop Good it up your eyes, open up your eyes Listen to the words, then you realize Say we have to talk about the peace and the unity Say we have to talk more love in the community Me don't want no wars, me said the war of the cease Love and peace was released Me don't want no wars, me said the wars of the cease Love and peace must release Me a go blaze like fire Send me a go walk right on the highway Freestyle Them a be blaze like fire Chalom the wicked man Send me never retire 
Mais c'est mes lèvres que je trouve tout ce qui t'a mis à ta dame à ta Love a fait comme me la fait chat down the flat Wicked man fait running and you did me na fait gat But me tell you c'est me no me na go fight them Me give them the bricks and love Taking over me a go tell them again me a fait tell them over Me a go blaze like fire to your man Me chat a freestyle again on the wire It a fit to the people before I go Run it. Live it up with your soul Freestyle Who's the man? You got one? No. Run on the covers oh, yeah. oh, Run on the oh, covers yeah. hey. <laughs> Alright then One more, one more Turn on the time coming on Yo man, tell them not people Them hear me now Say me not bustin' up on my mic And I send the lyrics in my fake go From the hat and to me So when I said me Take it to higher place Tell you this is for all them people Me said the whole human race The whole human race I said we need a little faith The whole human race We need a lick of more cake We must connect with our spiritual nature We must connect me said we need a lick of savior Find your heart and soul And the lyrics of the come up on the full control You know the soul I'm not getting a set The lyrics in my mirror He said that people no more time Be a ever can remind Real talk Hear the truth and see through the lies Hear the truth and see through the lies On the mic I said I know you're getting energized Tell man again freestyle yes. I will tell you bless up Bless Push up Push man and brother bride Yes I tell man Fire blaze Fire man Look at that That's about Record that man That'll be a whole <laughs> song right there Exactly what you said And that was all off That top. time I actually Let's Oh I kind of had a chord Nothing yes, written right. down was Nothing mean, written down Give thanks Give thanks No no pad. Lyrics again Lyrics hey, again pause, I mean, Babylon I... fall after that Yeah <laughs> Yeah, one go. more, one more. Bro, no, bro. Ha, we can go on more, <laughs> bro. Like, well, find another rhythm, bro. We go, yeah, bro. But no, before I get to that, but no, that was dope because I got to see that firsthand. And, you know, like, when you say um, Tailman and the whole beginning of the, your whole story, yeah, right? Yeah, you, like, got you had that channeling energy vibe. You know what I mean? It's you did exactly cut. that. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, when the eyes are yes, closed, so, man. when the eyes are closed, you just was Fire, brother. Yes, yeah. I get it. You know what I mean? But yeah, you're like, you're like, run one more. Can, can. We can before we head out. But here we go. Area. Round number two. Tell me about freestyle. Freestyle. Yeah. Yes. Maui. Run the rhythm. In a happy style. La. Real talk, Maui. Tell me about the chant. Tell me about the chant again. Aye, 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 aye. Middle of the island living, middle of the island living every time. Middle of me island life, me island life better than any strife. Middle of the island living, middle of the island living. Every time me come me a big dance giving. Middle of the island living, middle of the island living. We have to tell them again, the sun come shine, the rainbow so sweet, the water so nice, me say oh what a treat, all the good food filled with so much flavors, all the nice people with their low behavior, yeah. me love the island living, me love the island, island living. living, island living with all the good good giving, me love the island living, me love the island living, till when I be run chat it again. And I said that everything cool and I said the vibe so nice And I said that everybody know they never would that thing twice Living here on my way, me say, oh, what a blessing Life so good, no time for ever stressing Nothing work hard, enjoy yourself and play and have fun and do it again We like to go on some surfing, some of them are diving Some of them are fishing, some of them are hiking Some of them are hunting, some of them are playing island jams To your man pan the mic once again me love the island living, me love the island living And you know said that me love the aloha giving Me love the island living, me love the island living Aloha vibes and the love we giving Me know said that I realized when I was young And I moved to Hawaii in 1981 With my single mother and my two younger brother That was a blessing, said I never forget Me come down from my hilo town And me have a loco moco on the first day Me woulda tell you when me see and then me gang down to your car And me swimming in the lagoon first day in Hawaii Me a be really tell you true Me gang in living then me gang on my way Me living my way, what a Irish style And then when I graduate me just a move to 
look a while when we got the reggae back and the shakers not like The human me start it up, me do so freestyle again I tell you man me chant it up as if me not go up for it And me live a while, be about 11 years you see And in, in 2000 me come up back on my way Where my mom and my younger brother stay Where I make box productions for a minute Tell me what I'm trying I live living till man have to chat freestyle yes. One more time when the chorus was so man, you ready? Yeah, run it, run it We love the island, island living, we love the island living And all of the yellow are people they are giving Me love the island, island living, me love the island living And all the yellow have vines that the people but giving but Me but love but the but island living, me love the island living Tell man me have to chant it again Tell man is the man, man more and more, yes, roots sir. and creation <laughs> All the Maui crew, yes, rough sir. Neck, <laughs> Real yeah. talk, Tell man. Hey, tell man, uh, mahalo. Blue Blue thanks for killing it one. on the mic, man. Yes, yeah, so. oh, yeah, man. Until we, we get another, yeah. until we get another freestyler as Ooh. good as Tell man, he got the crown. Yeah, if we had a crown, we would crown him right now. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, the freestyle folks. champion. Welcome, uh, welcome back, folks, that last from one, that from that musical journey. Yeah, from that musical journey that. Tell man just took us on. Yeah. My yeah, pleasure. Welcome bro. back, everybody. Both of them was Hi, hammer because it was both different styles. Oh, man. yeah, and straight you just different styles. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love the line, though. Everybody but, that was watching this that doubted, bro, we just proved it wrong right there. <laughs> no, the end, I mean, Tell remember, there's Tell no favorite. Freestyle. Both yeah. of them was something I cannot do, so, man. Both of them was legendary. But, because mm-hmm. the second song, bro, that one was... Fuck he had man. the hook this time, man. Uh, I, the I, 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 <laughs> right, I want to fit perfect. Yeah, yeah, bro, hey, if you ever need me for do backup vocals on that bro. song, watch out. Know. Somebody might take those. Yeah, we might have to write that We might have to write that down. Yeah, I yeah. get to record it, so we get to record it. If I write Straight that up. song, then we'll go to Pono, and <laughs> yeah. you guys can see and that. And then no, we got a music video. We go to Bob's, but that's hard to get Bob's. Yeah, you never right. know if you're going to get Bob's. Hey, we'll music, hey, music video going to be like this, just recording, yeah. just going off Oh, on yeah, the yeah, that would be sick. <laughs> yeah, that was sick, though, right? Thanks for right. coming on, Tail. You're bad, man. Thank, Thank you, you guys brother. so much. Blessings, yes, more and more, as I always like to say. Definitely. Yes, hey, everybody, don't forget to like and subscribe. Automatic, man. Real Talk Maui. We out. Yes, sir.